This is Red Moon Roleplaying. It's the next night. Friday, November 8th. It's an important night. Charity dinner night. The Alumni Center is a large brick building on the campus of Oregon State University, and it's the go-to place for events such as the one that you're attending right now. On the other side of the road is the big research stadium where the Beavs play, max attendance of around 50,000. It's massive. All the movers and shakers in Corvallis, Salem and beyond are here tonight in the Cascade Ballroom for this charity dinner. And the proceeds are going to the Young Hearts Foundation, a foundation that partially funds your research, Dr. Christensen, as well as many other good causes in the uh, Corvallis area. The lights are low and there's music playing and, well, you find yourselves uh, enjoying the open bar and the bountiful buffet. People are mingling with the mayor, professors from the university, while the coach of the Oregon State Beavers is also here with a crowd around him. He's got an 8-1 record right now. The Beavers are second in the Pac-12, trailing only Washington. The path to a conference win is uh, not closed, but the Washington Huskies still remain undefeated, and that is a bit of a problem. There are TV screens with the election coverage on close to the bar with the sound off. You've got Fox, MSNBC, and CNN all going. Still too close to call. Dr. Christensen, you are here with Dr. Whitehead. Tiana, she's your age, uh, black with elegant gray hair. She holds a glass of wine that she is downing with quite some speed. It's uh, not, not the first one tonight. But, uh, well, if someone deserves to blow off some steam, it's what's the two of you, isn't it? She speaks, and, and her voice gives away that she's been an avid smoker during her life, and she's got that raspiness that's uh, common with folks who do that. You perhaps wondered why she would do that in spite of understanding all the risks, but, well, then again, people don't necessarily always make all that much sense. Uh, how's, how's the family taking everything? She asks you. Could be worse, all things... Considered the uh, the little one, she still has a few years, even if things shouldn't go as we hope to. Uh, and I surprised myself by talking about this so openly. Dr. Wyden and I, we're not on a very much personal level. We always get along professionally, but somehow it just comes out. Probably with the help of the alcohol. Um, and I... Don't stop myself. Yeah, my wife keeps asking me about when we will be able to pick it up again and uh, and give it a new start. You know, I've been uh, vouching for it. I've been keeping the lookout for guarantors and uh, and the way we can things we need to to work on. Uh, I've checked uh, with a new security company. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, that's that's the family. Uh, you, uh, I, I was wondering actually, are you uh, working on something else now, or uh, I haven't seen you push that hard lately, uh, or is that my imagination? I'm doing everything I can. I mean, you know the the hell that we have to go through with all this paperwork and all the bu- bureaucracy to get everything back on track, I, and it, it doesn't help that. I just feel awful about the fact that someone did this to us, don't you? And for what reason? I mean, we've said this countless times, it's just, I... Yeah, you're right, it feels like an attack, and for me too, it feels almost like... It feels like an attack on my family. I, I don't know, it's... You know it's personal to me, I can't... I cannot not make it personal, but I never bring that to the lab, but at this point... You know, it's... It's, it's hard, it's hard. Yeah, it's... I know that it's personal, and I value that because, you know, because it is personal. I mean, no one works as hard as you as you do, you know. And and this project wouldn't be what it is without you. So, you know, don't 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 lose track of that. I I guess, but it's it's something about her reassurances that don't really come through to me. I don't know why, and uh, I I notice myself rolling my eyes a little bit when she complim- compliments my work. Because to me it feels like it's not, it's not worth anything when we can't can't do anything. Uh, but I try to smooth it over, like not, don't, not, not trying to be mean to her or anything. I try to smooth it over by saying, "All right, so, um, so what? What do we do now? What? 
what are, what do you think is the next main thing that we need to get through to to get back on our feet? We need to try and aid the police as much as we can, and make sure that they have everything they need. I, I still have some hope that we could, we could find those test subjects. I mean, the, all the work is done. I mean, I know that it's a the odds aren't great, but um, and uh, I don't know. I have you been receiving any threats? At home, I mean. I, um... As I look uh, at her... I, what, this comes all of a sudden to me, so I... Look at her and... Uh, th- threads? Um, what do you mean? I was just thinking, I mean, whoever did this, they... They must hate us, right? They must hate us a lot. I, I don't know. That that's the thing. I, I, I what I don't know is that if the, if this is personal against us, is it about the research? What we're we're doing? Do they do they want to steal something from it, or is it just you? You think it's passion? What are you? What are you not s- saying here? I'm trying to to read her. Please go ahead. And that's a, a seventeen actually. I want to know. Uh, how she feels right now is he is she anxious is she scared of something yeah you can definitely pick up that uh, that she is um, she's been drinking quite a lot already and uh, you notice that but definitely she's rattled in some way I'm not the best at with people always I'm not the worst either I, I can't talk to people I, I'm, I'm used to talking to people um, from work and everything uh, I uh, I try to catch her gaze as she's I see she's she's anxious and I say hey is this something you I need to know that oh it's you know um, anonymous messages on social media shame on you that kind of thing hey, heck I I don't know about you but I don't feel shamed about anything uh, but no, no. I fear more is coming it's it's you know young people these days they're they're different, aren't they? I mean, I mean, just just look at what's happening in the country. Just look at the kind of protests. I mean, when people are upset these days, it's it's not just you know about making your point. It's it, it's about camping outside of people's homes, about accosting their neighbors, like with the Supreme Court justices. It's it's changed. Activism it used to mean something different back in the day. You know, with the the sit-ins at the segregated diners, the Dr. King's march. That was something people could get behind. Not this... Not this terrorism. I, I know it's a harsh word. I just... I'm, I'm just really, really upset. That, that's all. I want to try and reassure her somehow. And I want... Well, more than that. I want her to... I want her to do something to, to make sure that this... Actually... Gets pushed a little bit harder from her side if she can I I am not sure what she's doing but how could I get her and that this is my reader person my second question how could I get you to to push everything you can uh, at, at this point is it is it some kind of kind of personal reassurance that she needs maybe I can get this uh, security company to to put some extra efforts in a bit earlier before we even can start or something like that. How could I reassure her? Yeah, she does seem to be very uh, concerned about her physical safety. Perhaps, perhaps if you can help her with her personal security, not just the one at the lab, maybe that might help. She mentioned that she'd gotten messages on social media. That would spook a lot of people, you think? Yeah. Listen, I, I have been talking to if, um two other companies that that could help um, keep us and the the project safe Uh, if you are worried about your personal safety outside of work maybe uh, we could look into assigning a little bit of extra uh, surveillance or such uh, for your personal uh, quarters or so as well what do you think about that I suppose we could try and make a case for that. No? We need to be able to work in peace in order for this project to go as, as, as we want it to go. I mean, it's a huge opportunity for everyone, and we can save so many lives. We, we, we really can. So if you can help me with that, then it'll uh, make me feel a bit better. You find yourself 
thinking back to what she was just saying now and what you were saying about about what's been happening here about this activism or terrorism how is it that you feel about that you know enough of course to know that when she's saying that activism before used to be more peaceful it used to be easier to get people to go along with that you know that even those forms of activism were widely disliked back in the day it's a selective kind of remembrance but do you share that do you also think that it was better before or how do you view what has happened to you taking a step back i don't think it was that much better before people were still seeking personal revenge against those that they thought did things that didn't align with their personal ethics and people were sought out at their homes and on their way or at work and and names were printed I don't necessarily think that it was better before I think what we're dealing with now is just perhaps in this case a lack of the police uh, stepping in and, and seeing the seriousness of it all you find uh, yourself reflecting on those things and you continue speaking with Dr. Whitehead, having reassured her of the fact that you will help keep her safe, and perhaps now you will be able to move things ahead a bit faster. We will now move to Mr. Coleman, because you are also here. You are also a very important part of the community, and uh, you are here with your friend. Mm. It's difficult to say whether that's actually the case or not. His name is James Rochester Billington. He's heir to very old money. He's certainly the richest man in Benton County. And he is a fellow collector of valuable artifacts. You do find yourselves very much in the same circles. Do you like being around him? You know what? I'm never entirely sure. But, you know, at least he's entertaining and... Sometimes it's fun to have a little bit of a rival in these sort of things. Makes it feel more than just going around hoovering up historical objects. We're just associates, but that's okay. But yes, we're here. Like I said, it's important to invest in several things, and sometimes charities are good things to invest in. You give a little money, you help a good cause, and it makes you connections. Connections that then down the line might be able to help you diversify your portfolio. Or at least that's what my dad used to say. To be fair, I'm not entirely sure about what this is all about tonight. Something about hearts, uh, hearts, and people looking after their hearts. That sounds like a good uh, thing to invest in to me. And, well, I do know some doctors and some medical personnel. I've been to a few of these, although, again, it's purely to help out. I know absolutely nothing about medical procedure. As I was saying, Daniel, I can understand how you'd be confused. I certainly am. Why are the students so worked up about these artifacts? Mm Hmm? I mean, yes, yes. I mean, certainly colonialism was a big part in how these items originally disappeared from their homelands, but how come the focus is all on those owned here in the West? I mean, no one's been collecting artifacts like the Chinese these last few decades, and it's not like you see marches against them on campus. Not to mention the oligarchs in the countries of origin who would otherwise be hoarding them. Not exactly uh, democracies with high scores on the anti-corruption index, uh, are they? The young are full of ideas, you know that. When When you're that age, you think you know how the world works. It takes a while to grow up. And besides, they've got a point. A lot of people literally hold things purely for their own selfish gain. Y- you know, you-, you know me, I-, I believe that things should be spread around, that everyone should be able to see most things. But there's some people who literally buy a whole art gallery just so only they can see it. And to be fair, James, we did go to those countries and steal a lot of stuff. Hell, you know how I see that sort of thing. I've done my best to actually try and return a few things when I can. Hmm. Yeah, so when you can. I I don't know, Daniel. I just find it also very unfair. I mean, these items, they belong to all of humanity. We we all have a shared history as a human race, don't we? I mean, when did saying that something belongs in a museum become a bad thing? Do you, do you remember when? <laughs> was it sometime back when the that film came out, Indiana Jones, maybe? Or maybe not. I think it was supposed to be a good thing then. And that that's... I, I think that's how most people feel. I, I think... 
we are not out of touch, I think they are. I mean, as I was saying to Elon when I met him at the World Government Summit in, in Dubai, why is it that we're so focused on what divides us rather than what unites us? I roll my eyes a little at the mention of his friend Elon. The um, evening moves on, and the two of you actually finally cross paths at the, the open bar. You know each other since before, of course. The band is playing a cover of Meredith Brooks' classic one-hit wonder, Bitch. Dr. Christensen, you happen to know that she's from Corvallis originally. Yeah, funny story. Uh, not much art that I know otherwise that does come out of here. I feel like it's more of a place where people go to, to, um, well, to live uh, another kind of life. Who, uh, who knows, maybe one day uh, Ira, if she does to decide to pursue that dance career, she'll, uh, she'll be another one of them, I think to myself as I hear that song mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. child I'm a lover Coleman. man ah I say as I uh, take a sip of my champagne Dr. Christensen Dr. Christian uh, uh, I'm sorry but I'm always mispronouncing your last name <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Jermaine Jermaine hi good to see you and yes I do know the doctor We've not really bonded that much out of these events, but again, I have seen them. I know that they're an accomplished doctor in the field of medicine in the area, and, well, these sort of things are their bread and butter. So I say hello. Jermaine, hello! How, how, how is everything going? How are you? How are the, uh, the kids? Yeah, the kids. you got two kids. And the wife? How's that all going? Yeah, they're good, thanks. They, uh, they're actually asking about you. They know that one time that... Uh... We were all there, and, uh... Oh, they enjoyed it, the Christmas party last year. Yeah, <laughs> they did, they did. <laughs> they, uh, they, uh, they particularly liked the, the gifts. Uh, it was... But you, you seem to have a, a, a hand with, uh, with children, actually. Where did you... How did come, how comes that is? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess kids like presents. <laughs> I certainly <laughs> did as a kid. What can, what can I say? Yeah, yeah. But you know there are some way, some things that you just, you just can't buy, for money. So uh, I think I think you uh, you're undervaluing yourself there. You uh, you're a good uh, people's person. What can I say? I've got, got a lot of money. I like to try and spread it out when I can. It's, it's not all. <laughs> it's not like I can take it with me when I go. Yeah, no, no, of course. I mean, I I I appreciate everything you've done. For us as well, for the project, and uh, please don't mention it, Jermaine. I mean, you're actually, you know, you're actually a doctor. You, this, this stuff, like this is all because of you. This, uh, I, I'm sorry, what's tonight about again? Heart. It's uh, the foundation of the, uh, yeah, your heart research. Uh, how's that going? Oh well, it's. Uh, I'm not sure if you've kept up on the on the things. We haven't talked for a little while, but it. I, whereas you helped getting things uh, started and the ball rolling. I, I'd expect you to know about the uh, bump we we hit when certain of our specimens were, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, well, stolen from under our noses. I was about to say liberated, but I feel like that would be a far too kind phrasing in oh, this case. Oh, hell, I d didn't know about... About that, no. Uh, <laughs> specimens liberated. What, someone stole some Petri dishes or they broke in the lab and broke some equipment? Well, you know what we're working on. It's uh, it's uh, genetics. It's about transplantations. It's, uh, 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 well, it's about the things that we we, uh, we grow, and in that case, hearts. Uh, uh, that. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that, but, uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you're the doctor. I... I I just kind of signed some papers. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, of course. I shouldn't expect you to to get deep into every project you decide to fund, but uh, it's a it's a xenotransplantation process, and there were some uh, specimens involved in which we were hoping to harvest the organs from and uh, be able to use them on on humans. And unfortunately, one that was that I personally hoped that we could use for our for our little one in our family who suffers from the the exact symptom uh that that one uh, among others were were taken oh no that 
That's bad. Have you? What's what's the police doing? Do you need me to have a word with the uh, commissioner? Because I have I have a I I, I know I, you know I know him. Uh, you know, well, no, I don't know him, but you know I I have some friends who know him. Uh, I can get. I mean, they are they're, they're putting that on priority, right? And I'm at this point drawing a little sigh of relief because I I know I know Coleman is a good guy. Uh, he's a very nice and appreciated person by the community. Uh, but somehow I would always expect him to be too busy to. To, to try and help everyone and uh, when he says and offers this I, I do give a little sigh of relief saying oh yeah that that would be very kind but you know what I, I just talked to my uh, colleague uh, Dr. Uh, Tiana Whitehead uh, have you spoken to her? Uh gosh I don't think so no I, I Dr. Whitehead yeah I know she was involved in one of the, the I think she was there two years ago uh no, I. She, she, she never had accepted my invites. <laughs> oh well, uh, she's a bit of a recluse. Uh, I, I can't say that we've uh, gotten that close outside of the lab, but she just brought up recently that she'd uh, gotten some unwanted attention online. Some, some even people putting threats out there. You know how the how activism can be uh, f- f- quite fierce in these these times. I guess, although I don't know. What's so bad about helping out hearts? <laughs> I don't know, kids these days, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, we, like, we are helping those, uh, yeah, who, who don't have the, have the same opportunities. Uh, what, what, what she did mention that, and I was gonna ask you, because I, I know not the hospital itself isn't always happy to put in an extra, coinage for personal use and I, I don't see it like that but I, I if you knew someone with a little bit of, of pull in uh, in security perhaps someone that have just maybe help install some I don't know CCTV at her house something to make her feel a bit more safe than than I could perhaps uh, push her to Make sure we get the ball rolling again. Uh, oh yeah, get over this little hump that you said. Uh, well, hell, uh, why not? Sure, yeah, I can talk to some people. I'll, I'll get someone to talk to the commissioner, and we can maybe do a little, <laughs> a few security cameras. That, like, I, I know some good people. I know some good people to do some good security. You do. There is a person that might be able to do just what you are thinking about here. You made a um, rather large donation to the Oregon Police Union. You think you saw Mr. Bergeron, who's one of the the heads of that organization uh, around here somewhere. You might be able to get him to prioritize this in, in some way. I mean, it's difficult to talk to the sheriff. You know, they, they have to play by the rules. But when you go through the union, sometimes, sometimes um, they're very grateful for the donations and uh, they prioritize by themselves. Jermaine, don't say another word. You you got stuff to do tonight, I'm sure. I tell you what, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find my uh, my guy, and let's see if we can organize. Oh, I don't know, maybe not just for her, but yourself. Maybe the hospital, a little more public security. Uh, let, let's, you know how it is. Sometimes they're busy. They got a lot going on. But if the right person says the right thing, they can quickly realize what's actually important. And I think in this case, they're making sure our uh, hell tonight. Like this whole thing is for. The charity for you know that the hard thing like it's got to be kept safe right we can't we can't have the money people are investing going to waste because of thefts and or, or, or sabotage well, coleman you are truly an exceptional person i am moved that you would so quickly decide to to just go on this and and uh, and and do something Th- thank you thank you so much it, you i can't express how much it means mr coleman you were looking for Kelsey Bergeron, the head of the Oregon Police Union, he is right over there. You can roll your influential friends. The, he's, a, he's a large man in a police uniform. He's got a bald head and he's got a, his cap in his hand. Ten. I go over and I say, hey, uh, Kelsey, how, how are you enjoying the evening? Ah, Mr. Coleman, it's very nice to uh, see you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to again express the gratitude uh, on, on behalf of the... Uh, of the union on on your um, well on your very very generous donation. Well, you know anything for our city's finest. Anything for our city's finest. Uh, can I pull you aside for a second? I wanted to pull you or something. Hmm. Any uh, 
he does as you say. Uh, apparently, uh, there's been a little bit of some trouble going on behind the scenes. Uh, some of the researchers, a good friend of mine, a uh, Dr. Germain Kristen, and his uh, his associate, Dr. Whitehead, they've they've been having some trouble. Ah, uh, yes, you're referring to the um, to the break in uh, in the in the lab. Hmm. Any chance that that could be moved up in priority? I kind of think it's quite important, and according to him, um. Well, apparently you guys have just been so swamped with work lately that you haven't been able to really focus on it. But, you know, could you focus on it a little more? I'm sure all the investors here, including myself, would really, really appreciate knowing that the people like yourself were on the case, so to speak. Let me see what I can do. And, and uh, if the generosity that you've shown is something that, that continues, then, of course, you know, it's... um. Yes, I, I feel it. Part of me been hoping to coast by on what I've already done. But no, he's probably going to need a little more... If I'm perfectly honest, it's not the sort of thing I prioritize. Yes, security is important, but, you know, actually <laughs> giving the police more of a paycheck, I kind of feel these days the government gives them plenty. Plenty. I'd rather be focusing my money on things like, well, the hospitals or <laughs> my own endeavors. Oh, Mr. Kelsey, I think maybe in the future you'll be getting some <laughs> some surprises, maybe even a Christmas bonus, hey? <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, he smiles at that. I lower my voice a little, and um, apparently uh, Miss Whitehead in particular has been a little worried about her own safety. Any chance you could maybe, you know, throw some of, uh, you, you know, the guys who do my place. Maybe some, she could get a discount on some good cameras for her house, or you might even know a guy she can talk to. I, I know some people. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sort that out, he says. Uh, he, he pats you on the back. Well, thank you again for the, for the support, and uh, for, um, <laughs> For standing up for us holding the blue line. We now move to Dr. Christensen. You're getting a call on your phone. And uh, I just started to enjoy a bit more of the food and drinks here. And uh, talking to some people I hadn't uh, seen before, which was interesting. So uh, I just have to excuse myself. And uh, okay, what's coming through now then? Uh, And I, uh, yeah, I'll look up at the... Callers, ID. It's Doctor Whitehead. Yeah, that's strange. She's not here anymore. And uh, yeah. Uh, Jermaine. Tiana. Yeah. This is so embarrassing. You. You gotta help me. I um, I went off looking for a place to smoke, and I, I guess I took a wrong turn. You can hear that she sounds audibly drunk. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, where are you now? I don't know. It's it's dark, and, and I can hear I can hear machines whirring close by. There's a door here, but it, it locked itself after I closed it, and I, and I can't open it anymore. I took the stairs down somewhere. Uh, okay, you took the stairs down, and, and just outside. Maybe you should just wait there a bit. Are, are you outside the building, then? No, I'm d- downstairs... Maybe a, 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 could it be a base. Can you please come and find me? Can you please come alone? I, I uh, can't bear anyone else finding out about this. Yeah, hang on. Just take it easy, okay? Um, I, I start looking. Call cuts out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm starting to look around me. Is there a? What exits are there? Um, she said stairs down. What floor are we on anyway? We are on the uh, ground floor. Stairs down would indicate that she would have ended up in some kind of basement. You remember hearing her mentioning machines and that it was dark. But that would all be consistent with something underground. Yeah, some kind of heater is maybe. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, okay. If you were someone who was in here, uh, having had perhaps a little bit too much to drink... Well, there's a lot of traffic that's going through a set of double doors where the serving staff is going in and out. That one's actually pretty close to where you were standing, pretty close to the bar. Um, That would be the quickest way out if someone stopped caring about what the correct way to exit is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that that looks like something she would do. That's... Oh, God. She's... uh... What is happening with her? I need I need her to be focused. Not this. I should have I should have said something about her drinking. As I I think to myself as I walk towards this door, potential door that she could have gone through. 
Yes, and and the doors are are possible to open. There's you see um, some staff cleaning up some of the uh, food um, are moving through there. You could follow right through if you wanted to. They don't seem to. It doesn't seem to be um, a lot of security here necessarily. I mean, everyone who's here is well, quite wealthy and important. So there's a lot of trust. It seems uh, on the guests. Yeah, I. If there's any staff there that are cleaning up, I uh, I go up to them and I say, "Excuse me, uh, one of my friends I took the wrong exit and ended up in some basement. Do you know which, which where I should go?" Oh, basement. Um, over there. Um, through the doors and then down the stairs. He seems to be very very busy with uh, with cleaning up. Yeah, sure. Um, all right. Well, then at least I have a direction. I'll uh, try that. Uh door that she suggested to me so there is stairs down to what looks to be some kind of basement door that's where she pointed do you want to try to go there or do you want to call for help or what do you want to do surely it's nothing dangerous i just gotta make sure the door doesn't lock behind me so i i kind of try the door before going through uh, if there's anything that before the stairs that I sh- just should avoid getting locked out of. Yeah, and, and you're not, you're not all that inebriated, um, so you you have a pretty good handle on all this actually. And, and no, this door is not going to lock behind you. You you see that that's not the kind of construction on this one. Um, as you get down here, um, it's a storage area. There's um, old furniture. Oregon State Beavers memorabilia, cardboard standees of players of yore uh, around here. It's a, it's a little bit dusty. It seems like it's not exactly a place where a lot of people go, probably. Yeah, and as I get a, down there and away from the rest, I just try and raising my voice. Uh, Tiana? Tiana, you're here? There's no, um, no answer to that. There is a door further in, however... Could perhaps be that? Could it be that she's moved even further in? Could be if she at, at, at her current state, of course. Uh, I uh, look at these things and see these old players that that were more in my time. It's it's fun uh, remembering some of these, but I better make sure I don't step in something. And it seems a bit messy and dusty down here, so. I start making my way through these, and it's, uh... I feel a bit sweaty and annoyed. And as you said, yeah, the, the standees of, of of heroes of yore, it's, yeah, as you said, these are these are the players you were watching, and, and that uh, made you fall in love with the team. Um, it's it's nice. It's, um, it's, it's a good feeling. But uh, perhaps more than that, it's... Being here is not necessarily something you want to do. There's a nice buffet, nice you know, food and, and drinks available. Um, and now you're down here in this dark, dusty place. Oh, hopefully you'll find her soon. You, you do need to find her soon because, well, she's kind of important for your project after all. Yeah. I, I try calling her again, uh, or I try calling her back while I try and listen out for this sound of machines she was describing. Yeah, you're listening for both the sound of a rigging signal uh, or machines, but there's there's nothing really past the doors that you found further into this room. You see that there's a long corridor. There's uh, you see thick pipes in the in the ceiling here. This perhaps for cables or water or something like that. Everything is lit with bluish lights. It's it's very 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 long corridor. Like it it, it goes for what must be hundreds of meters um probably some kind of like underground passageway maybe between the alumni center and the stadium maybe the the college for veterinary medicine maybe they're all connected somehow yeah i i shouldn't be here that this is <laughs> a little bit overkill uh i try raising my voice again like into this corridor tiana tiana a humming sound that's coming from uh, the lights up above. You hear the sound of steps somewhere far off in the, in the tunnel. Hello? 
Who's there? A anyone down here? You hear a door closing and then the blue lights flicker off as though they were connected with the door somehow. It's dark all of a sudden. Oh Christ. Uh, how do I do this on the phone again? I'm going to try and put my torch on. You do, and then having that does help you light the place up. The steps are now coming closer. That, that's strange. They were moving away. I uh, started to feel a bit uneasy. Tiana? They're coming closer, and then they stop. I try to look around. Where, where are they coming from? It's such a long corridor. Your torch, it it helps you with some meters ahead, but this darkness, it's... I mean, you're underground. It's its pitch black. Uh, this can't be, can't be right. She wouldn't have gone through all this. I shouldn't be here. I, did I just hear that? Or was it... Maybe it was just dripping water. I... I start slowly backing up, feeling quite a intense or growing sense of unease. I don't really feel like I should be here. I reiterate to myself, and I don't feel... For some reason, I don't want to turn away from that sound. You then hear a, the sound of banging on a, on a door. <sighs> when someone bangs on a metal door, bum, 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 bum. Further down. Bum, 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 bum. Tiana, is that you? You don't hear anyone say anything, but you, you heard that noise. It sounds like... C could it be? If you were stuck behind a door, is that, isn't that what you would do? Yeah. Wow, she's really lost. I... I, uh, I, I try to just... Oh, all right. Get myself... Together, uh, this is fine. It's just someone's lost down here, and I don't. I probably didn't hear those steps. I am. Um, I'm gonna try and go towards those doors, even though they're a bit far away. And I try and look at the floor. If there's clearly dust that's been disturbed here, is, is there footsteps? And there is. Yes. Oh, God. You don't hear. Anything else now? Everything is quiet again. Your torch is lighting up the darkness here. The bluish lights are still gone. You see the door that... Presumably where the banging sound was coming from ahead. I want to get out of here as quickly as possible. And that banging is quite intense. So I, 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 I start moving a bit faster. If there's room, I'll, I'll probably start jogging to get over there. Yeah, and, and you get there quite quite quickly. You see a, a nuclear mark on here, as though perhaps this was some kind of old fallout shelter? Oh, wow. Yeah, that could be. Um, there were plenty of those in the days of, uh, yeah, when threats were more imminent in that regard. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Uh, well, I look at the door. Is, it, is there a handle? How do you open it? Yeah, it's one of those that you, you spin a wheel to open it up. This is real valve, almost, like a vault. I'll, uh, I'll try and use my one hand first, since I'm still tr trying to light things up with my, with my phone. Hmm. You do that, and there's, well, there's nothing else around now. The, the sound of the steps is gone. It's just you... And the sound of you spinning this valve open. And then the door opening with a kind of clank. Tiana, I say, and I push it open. You hear the sound of someone crying. Tiana, you in there? Jermaine? Christ, how did you end up down here? This is... Is this way out? Come on, come, come on. You uh, see where the sound is coming from. There, there's uh, mop suits hanging from a clothing rack uh, in here, and you see 
a blue light in here. It's Dr. Whitehead is slumped against the wall, her cell phone lighting up her, her face in the darkness. <laughs> it smells horrible in here, like... Oh, yeah, that's vomit. Uh, listen, I'm I'm not going to come in there. I, I don't want us both being shut in, okay? Can you can you can you get up? Yeah, 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 sure. Um, and and she comes up to you and and yeah, you you smell it. She's she's definitely been been feeling sick and uh you also see that she's been crying. You see that in the in the light from your phone as, as you light up her face. The makeup has has been running down her face. Oh wow. Listen, Tiana, if 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 things are really bad, you, you know what? This is this is not the. Oh come on! I I try and wipe away a little bit of that tears and and smudged makeup. She looks at you with with gratitude in her eyes and and, and smiles. <laughs> thank thank you, Jermaine. I, I. It's been so much recently. The, the threats, the the break in, the the sabotage of everything that we've been trying to build. God, I'm I'm on my knees here. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm suffering, and I know that we're both going through this. I, I'm, I'm so I'm sorry. Listen, I, I come here, and I try to get her out so I can close that door again. Don't like it. You're able to do that. Listen, I just hold this. And I pass her my phone so we can look through the light, and I can lead us. Um, look, I talked to Coleman. I don't know if you know him. He's one of the in, uh, initial funders of the project, and he's going to l- see about getting you some extra security, okay? That's that's great. Th- thanks. What even is this place down here? Some kind of shelter? <laughs> well, it's not the smoking room, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, I just want to save lives. Yeah, that's, that's what you want to do as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. This is, this is the, the cause. This is what we're, why you get into this. I would say, yeah, it's helping. It's helping people. I, I haven't been entirely truthful with you, Jermaine. I didn't tell you everything. About, what about? It wasn't just social media. There was. There was a letter under my door. They know where I live. They. They said that I would deserve what was coming to me. <sighs> that's terrible. I'm. Uh, that's. Uh... Listen, I. Uh... We'll get. We'll get maybe some surveillance around your house. Okay. Have you taken that to the police? I think we need to do that, yes. Yeah. I... I think we need to do that. I... I didn't want this to become bigger than it already is, but... You're, you're right. Yeah, no... All right, well, can you, can you... Can you... Can you help me back? Just... I just feel so numb, Jermaine. I just... Yeah. I just want things to be like they used to be. I just... I just want to feel alive again. Yeah, I, I know. I know the breakthroughs we had <laughs> she smiles at you yeah let's get back let's get you back and this this I think this has been despite everything it's just a successful night I think I've heard a lot of good people saying good things oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad and you, you'll forget about what what happened here right uh, <laughs> it can be our little secret right listen I I don't care about that uh, what I do care about is that you keep in sharp, okay? I need you. I, I need you a hundred percent into this, that that we can both move forward, you know, as a force. Whenever we can see something, we can move on. Just go, all right? So don't don't let this get to you, okay? All right. And uh, you begin making your way back to um, well, back to the the party. And we go back to Mr. Coleman. Uh, James is telling a group of people close to you of the time when Elon let him ride in the Cybertruck prototype. And that's when you're getting a call from your business manager. Huh. Interesting. Anthony Willis. 
he doesn't normally call this late at night. I mean, he knows uh, when you are working, so it must be important. The, the call is, as always, encrypted, so you know that you can speak openly, um, provided, of course, no one can overhear you. Of course. Now, I'll take a moment to find somewhere outside, uh, just to take the call, just in case it's something very important, and I'll be like, Anthony, hi, what's up? Everything okay? Why, why, what, what's the call for? I'm, I'm currently at the, uh, the, the auction. No, not the auction. <laughs> the uh, charity thing. Hearts. The hearts thing. Gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, Mr. Coleman, um, uh, apologies for calling you this, uh, this late. I, I wouldn't do this un- unless it was important. And I don't want to waste your time, so I'll, I'll get right to it, if, if that's all right. Go ahead. Shoot. Uh, we've been reached by some, um, some rather troubling news from um, our operations in the DRC. He must be referring to your cobalt mine in Congo, Kinshasa. It's uh, it's very lucrative. It's it's a trade that's quite controversial, but if it's done right, it's used for a lot of important gadgets and technologies that we all need. Now, I would not normally call you on this kind of matter, but time is of the essence. Um, I'm going to need your approval for a five hundred thousand dollar expense. Uh, it's needed for public affairs uh, to avert what would otherwise be a crisis. Uh, and you, of course, understand directly what uh, he's talking about. He he needs to bribe someone. Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. What what exactly is the crisis you're managing? I'd like I would like to know that. So, would you really like to know? Um, if you know, that means that you would have to lie if uh, someone ever confronts you about this. <sighs> Those goddamn minds. Again, that's where the money comes from, but it's not what I want. Not the stuff my father set up. If I had my way, half those mines would be closing. I'm aware that some things down in those parts of the world don't go well. Is this one of those things? God damn it. Uh, get it done. I would normally deal with these things by myself, but this is this is right this is hitting right on the authorization limit and the CFO has been on my ass about expenses. I understand. I understand. I I understand. Just just get it sorted. Just remember to keep doing when you can. How, how is that sale going? I, I'd this year been trying to get Anthony to sell that particular mine to someone else. So it would be someone else's problem. Obviously... Sell for a good price, but still get rid of it. Now, the Chinese have been lowballing us. Um, they are the ones who are uh, the only other business in town, basically. If you would be prepared to sell it at a much lower value than what the mine is worth, then of course we can move ahead with no, it. But, uh... No, 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 no. Clear it. But this is the last time, Anthony. If I don't want, I don't want to hear again of there being a problem. Because if there is a problem, I want it to be someone else's problem. I understand, sir. Well, I'll send you the expense claim now. Um, sorry again for calling you so late. Mm. I hang up. And immediately, as though he had it prepared, there is a email that comes in with um, an approval request for an expense of five hundred thousand dollars to Steinhagen and Company. Public affairs expense. Do you approve it? I do. I head back in. I grab a full glass of champagne. I feel guilty. I don't want to know what the issue is because I can't. I can't be liable. But my conscience tells me something bad is probably happening down there. That's why I want to get out of the mining industry. It's not... The cost it takes to make that sort of thing safe these days is extreme, and most of the time, out of your control. I can't make the people somewhere else mine safer. I wish I could, but I can't. Again, my father didn't have those scruples, but I'm not my father. Hell, that's why I'm here tonight. I want to try and do good by the world. That's what money should be used for, to be doing good, and that sort of thing, and this probably isn't, but... Hopefully this is the last time. Again, I want to get rid of that mine as soon as possible. But I can't just sell it for peanuts. No, you can't. You can't. But there's something nicer that happens next. Miss Elizabeth Forrest, wearing a very elegant, expensive-looking black dress, comes up. Daniel! There you are. I've been looking all around for you. Oh! 
Little old me, really? Why? <laughs> I, I was hoping you'd be here tonight. How, 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 how are you enjoying the evening? You notice that the music has changed and that the people are dancing. Um, I'm, I'm doing great. I, are you having fun? I am now. <laughs> it's been an interesting night. Um, but it seems to be going good. I, I again, I, I've heard the projects had a bit of a, a few bumps, but hopefully tonight, well, it's all gonna get back on track. I have a feeling everything is going to be going right back on track. How about a, how about a dance to celebrate that everything is going to be going on track? She says, smiling. Oh gosh, I have two left feet. I, I don't want to embarrass a, a lady such as yourself. I'm sure you can dance. Come on, it's not, it's not samba or something like that. We're just, it's just slow dancing. Well, if you, if you insist, I'm quite nervous actually. I think to myself, but now this is what I need to take my mind off things. I'm gonna dance with her. Nice lady. I'm gonna see the doctor later and tell him I've sorted that. This project's gonna go well, and it's gonna be a nice Christmas. Yes. And um, well, you do end up dancing for quite a long time. Actually, it's it's quite nice. The event starts near its end, and something happens that you had or hadn't expected, I don't know. Elizabeth tells you, so I, um, I live close by, and I happen to have a very nice bottle of the Balvenie, if you want to come see how I live. It's a, it's a very obvious invitation, um, but there's something kind of nice about that, isn't there? Given the fact that, well, you do have a kind of professional relationship as well. Anything other than something completely obvious would... Well, it would be problematic, wouldn't it? Hmm, it would, but at the same time, that's an invitation. and I wasn't expecting it, actually, so... Hell, why not? Oh, well, I mean, you're going to need someone to help you with that, I guess. I, I, I'd i be honored to... Uh... <laughs> oh, come here, she says, and she, she uh, takes a hold of your um, arm and, 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 and pulls you with her. And I shall follow and... Keen to try and enjoy the rest of my evening. This is a good development. And you go to her place. Can you describe how she lives? It's not quite a mansion like myself, but it's not a bad apartment, especially uh, situated in the lovely part of Oregon as it is. And I like to think there's a lot of elements to her career here. She seems to have some nice pictures on the walls, maybe a big bookshelf full of books. Cozy. I like it. Something nice about a place that's intimate and not so big. It is. How does it smell? Like her. Lavender and honey. Who who takes the initiative, you think? Are you the sinner or the saint? I think it would be her. I always get quite anxious at this sort of thing, but... Still, it's happening. I kind of... <laughs> I'd have been wanting it for a couple of years now. But never thought it would happen. Besides, we're at her place, not mine. It's always, always easy to relax at places that aren't home. Yeah. How does it feel to be with her? Ah, <sighs> wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And the drink certainly helps. It does. It does. Doctor Christensen. The night has ended, and you're at home. Can you describe your home lab for us? My home lab looks almost more like an old doctor's office with a desk and a chair, and an armchair, like a comfortable armchair, and that's in leather, and the desk is in dark wood. There are some... Uh, bookshelves as well also in dark wood it's yeah yeah it's it's far from a modern kind of office that you'd see these days something about this that i like keeping traditional and uh, so is the uh, table it's an operation table in one corner of the room which uh, also looks a bit older in design where these kind of brown leather-like cushions that I would then spread out uh, something across 
uh, when I'd have a patient. It's not something I do. I haven't gone completely private, but I have everything I need here. And uh, and uh, on shelves and in cupboards, I have all the instruments needed as well. If I actually wanted to do quite a complex procedure, I could that. And there are, are IV drips and stands and everything ready to be unfolded and, and taken out. Uh, but uh, there I am most often just sitting by the desk and doing office or admin work unless someone in the neighborhood wants something checked that out and I have the time over which I've had a little extra time now that the project is suspended so sometimes I have someone over uh, one of the elderly perhaps needing something looked at or one of the kids or anyone who needs a little quick checkup. I'm quite broad in my knowledge so I'm, I'm good at doing a diagnosis in, in most cases of simple ailments. You also have a refrigerator in the lab here. There are uh, containers inside that have different numbers on them. Which number are you going to examine today? There are things here that I shouldn't be touching unless we get a firm go-ahead on the project again. But it is irksome not to do so, and I, I do take out them out from time to time. There is one labeled F264 uh, that has certain properties uh, ha and enzymes, uh, all much associated with organs helping acclimatize to a new host body. Yes. And next to it is one of the hearts, actually, that you took from one of the previous test subjects. It's not quite there. We're on 90% compatibility. Not quite good enough for your daughter, but, well, at least you'd been able to eliminate all the simian retroviruses in this one. That's overcoming one of the primary challenges of uh, transplantation from simian to human. So, there's that. You're reminded of, of when you took that heart out. The way that, that they scream when they feel pain. It's a bit unsettling, isn't it? Getting the anesthesia right, it's, it's tricky. And, and it hasn't always been right. As you said before, progress like this, it comes at a cost. And in the grand scheme of things, so much suffering will be avoided through your work. Isn't that right? I've always had a tendency to put feelings aside when it comes to work. I work a lot. I keep, keep my hours straight so I do get time for the family and so on. But yeah... There's been things that I've seen, and especially in this project, that if I hadn't been able to work afterwards, I don't think I'd been able to deal with it unless I went to talk to someone. I don't like the idea of going to talk to someone. But the screams, I try to bury them, and looking at that heart, it's the result that I'm trying to focus on. This is close. This is close. It's the feeling of taking it out. Because you can't just, you can't put a cocktail of things into the host when you're ready to make a transplantation. You can't just put a heavy dose of anesthesia into well, one of the hosts. If that gets too much mixed up in the heart and with all the other things that are too there to accommodate yes sacrifices and it's a start maybe someday we will be able to completely grow this without a host body but we're not there yet the things we could do <sighs> your car alarm starts beeping downstairs all of a sudden oh Christ do you have a gun at home Dr. Christensen? Yeah. 
This is weird. It usually doesn't go off. Not here. Not these days. I finger the fridge door for a second before I decide to stride to action. I close it. I go to the desk. I hesitate for a bit, and then I look through the windows. Can I see anything out there? It's dark. You can't see anything. Not from here. Damn it. I'll open the desk and I'll... I'll take the gun. I... You do? Especially this day when... After talking to Dr. Whitehead about her problems... I can't have that. I can't have that. I have a family. I start moving down the stairs yeah. and get to the... Get to the front door. Try to look out through a window here as well. You think you can see glass out there? But you'd have to open the front door to be able to make out more. Yeah, seeing that definitely sets me off a bit. Uh, but there are, It's not a completely isolated street. Somebody else might have been alerted by this as well. I won't be alone, I think to myself. And I open the door. And the sound of the, the car alarm becomes even greater as, as the door is now open. And you see that there's this glass everywhere. The, the car window has been smashed, it seems. Yeah. Wow. You see that there's a rock inside the car. Clearly this was deliberate. Is there anyone around? Is there anyone moving? No. You stand there with the gun. What do you do? You notice that the lights in the house are starting to come on. It seems like the kids and your wife are waking up. I reach down in my pocket with my other hand. I shift the gun over so I don't have to hold it with my right hand. And I'm uh, going to reach for the car keys and just turn the... Unlock the car so the alarm turns off. You do that. Your uh, youngest daughter comes down the stairs in her pajama. D Daddy, w what's going on? It's all right. It's all right. Uh, it's just the car. It's just the car. Don't worry, darling. Just uh, go to mom for a bit, okay? And I kind of uh, just raise my voice a little bit, not like screaming, jump up to the house. It's fine. Just the car. And as you say that, you see how she tenses up uh, as though you didn't try to, to, to scream at her. You tried to keep things under control, but perhaps, well, it's a very stressful situation, isn't it? She runs back into the house uh, crying. Uh, Mikael, Mikael, are you going to call the police? I feel like uh, I should do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Mikael's got it. She, she's got the kids. I'll, I'll just call the police while I go out here and just have a little look at whatever's in the car. And you call the police and you see the smashed window, the rock there, and there's no message. Nothing. Just glass, a rock, and your car. Mr. Coleman, you wake up in your own bed. Not Elizabeth's. You don't remember leaving her place. Huh. The TV is flickering in the background. CNN has called the election for the Trump-Haley ticket. The dirt makes your feet stick to the sheets. You... This taste of blood. Your... She... The sheets are bloody, too. Your hands are covered in it. This, uh... This has happened before, hasn't it? Well, this is concerning. I get up, I look at the sheets. Am I okay? Am I hurt? You're okay. It's just like last time. The first time you were afraid. But nothing came of it. You changed the sheets. And the world moved on like nothing had happened. It was fine. It's fine. It will always be fine, Mr. Coleman. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the scenario A Hole in My Heart for Cult Divinity Lost. We have created this scenario ourselves, and this series is sponsored by Elmgast. The music was made by Atrium Carceri, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. 
We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon. Martin Hoshobert, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anton, Graham Berry, and Doug Thompson for their generous support. And would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that death, that is only the beginning.